Hello there and welcome to my uh, Corel Aftershot Pro tutorial on using the layers. This case uh, we are talking about the uh, heel clone layer which is also like a blemish remover if you do um, uh, portrait photography or just family kids whatever. And uh, if you haven't already checked out the introduction to layers video I recommend you do that. It's uh, up here in the corner and um, it just kind of covers the functions of layering themselves. I won't be going into all the layer function feature details in this video. You'll see me doing things, but I won't be taking time to really discuss them. They're discussed in the introduction video. Obviously, uh, feel free to leave a comment if I uh, say something that's uh, wrong and you want to give me some advice. Also, uh, I absolutely would love to do videos that people want to watch. So if there's something you want to learn or, or know if Corel does and, and I can help out, leave me a comment below. Happy to, uh, happy to do that. So let's take a look at the uh, clone technique. This is uh, very common and uh, until you learn about layers in Corel Aftershot, uh, cloning is something that was done somewhere else. You would uh, edit your, your image, export it, and then you could use Photoshop if you're, if you're a Photoshop guy or I use Corel products. So there's um, the uh, Photo Paint or whatever it's called, which is pretty rudimentary, but it works all right. I, I use that for uh, my commercial work. I do um, web design and graphic design for uh, obviously for people so I do like business cards or what have you people send me photos and I can use that clone tool to mess with uh, getting rid of blemishes or like one one lady who had hair didn't like her hair and wanted me to clone out some of her hair so in a landscape situation like we have here cloning is very common for the usual things right uh, twigs rocks coke cans things that uh, either a you didn't notice when you were shooting or B, you knew we're there and you just put in your head, well, I like this image, I like this composition, the, the framing is good, whatever, and uh, I'm going to have to get rid of that later. And knowing how to do it helps you make that decision when taking the picture as opposed to walking away from a scene just because it had one thing that was not going to work for you. You know, or it had some, had some uh, rocks in an area and you thought, Ugh, that's just not going to work for me. You either leave, don't shoot the picture, or knowing you can do the clone technique, uh, right with your raw files uh, makes you say, you know what, take the picture, and I'll get rid of it later. So let's take a look at that. So uh, we have just a few sort of, we have a rock here and some blemishes. This is obviously a frozen lake, and so some dark spots. I'm not going to go hog wild and try to get rid of everything. I'm just going to show you some of them. So let's take a look at that. So I've got my uh, my layers. I'm going to do heel clone. And uh, again, just like uh, everything else, you've got the opacity. I always like to lower it a bit just so that it not, doesn't look like I'm you know, completely putting a, a template down and painting over something that can look a little ridiculous. And uh, I'm going to go here that I want to attack first, activate my layer, and come down here and, and, and give it a click, and we'll see what we get. So first thing I want to do those, I'm going to zoom in a bit so it's a little bit easier to see. So when I click down, it gives me uh, two circles. We've got the one in red and the one in black. And so one is the source, and the other is where you're actually trying to clone it onto. So just so that we can, uh, you know, and then when I grab this, it moves around together like that. But this one I can move independently. So if I click here, it's now cloning this over here. Remember, I've got, I, when I first set this up, my opacity is a little bit lower, so it's not 100%. Let's go back here and jack that up. So you can see it's just like a, Photocopier, right? Copied this, copied over there. So I can lower that down to, to some other value. So you can also do the swap source method. So let's say you had that wrong. You can just come here and do swap source, and it will um, move these. Uh, um, it'll flip them around. I don't even know what I'm trying to say here. You can change a few of the uh, uh, values to get the effect that you're after. And you can also resize using the mouse wheel and you can see the effect that it's having there on the uh, feathering. Right. So again, you'll play with it based on uh, uh, what your needs are. And uh, so I'm going to take this, I'm actually going to jack it up a little bit more because I really want to get rid of that. And uh, I know that in this case, I've got um, uh, the snow happening, so it's pretty uh, uh, a pretty even surface. 
so having a, a higher opacity is not a big deal. Obviously, if you're dealing with um, you know uh, skin tones, you're getting rid of facial blemishes or something, you might need to play with opacity a bit to uh, um, you know, make it look so it doesn't look like you just dabbed them with uh, some kind of a clay. I'm going to click here, and you see that it's gone. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and let's go over here. So again, uh, in the introduction video, we talk about the fact that you can create multiple layers to have different effects. So I'm going to actually create um, a second one because I don't want to. I don't want to have uh, what I'm doing here if I change values affecting the other one. Uh, oh, see that's wrong. I didn't. This is the source. I didn't want to do that. So I'm just going to do swap. Now again, you don't have to create a layer for each one. If you do want to just kind of keep going, you can uh, simply do that and uh, move your move your way through the scene of you know getting rid of of things. And uh, the the thing that this one doesn't do is it doesn't paint on. Like if I use Photo Paint, and I believe the same as in Photoshop, if you use a clone tool, you're pretty much dragging it through the scene, and um, this guy, the way that it works is, you know, it's not you're not dragging this along while you clone along this, this the edge. Is that right? Is that, did I say it? That, hopefully, I said that in a way that makes sense. You know, because the other the other tool I have, um, the other photo editing program is I, I, I literally start the tool, I pick an area that's off to the side of the area I'm trying to fix, and then I can basically um, move my mouse down along, and it'll basically clone as it moves along, right? So that way, if you've got a long thing, a stick, um, grass, you know, in some edge, whatever it is, and you can essentially just sort of keep dragging and keep moving, and it'll keep sampling and and cloning as you go along. This doesn't do that. This one, you're you are doing a little bit more um, of this kind of stuff. Now let's take a look at um, one of the other options in here. This is the the heel option, and this is different than these options. So the heel option essentially creates just one area. And then it samples and sort of merges from from around. So, it it again, you're going to pick which version of this you need to get the end result. So I'm just doing this to kind of get rid of a few things, and so you can see there. Right. So let's uh, pop back out to here, and I'm going to do this. So you can see the stuff that's there, and then you can see see it gone. And again, you can be super extra careful working on any kind of an actual project as opposed to this tutorial. Um, so that's essentially using the clone tool. It's uh, a little bit clumsy, but it does have a couple of nice options. And once you kind of get used to it, um, other than the fact that this is what it looks like while you're working, um, I find that it's pretty effective. Um, there Again, there are times where I'd rather use the um, sort of brush version of it. Um, when I'm, uh, um, like I said, like I would in, in um, you know, photo paint or something. So I just don't get the brush option here. So you can, you can again, choose different regions, different shapes, but uh, it's just not, it's not quite the same. Uh, let me check. I don't know if blemish works on the landscape stuff very well. Let's do a little zooming in here. I'm going to try some of this area, just just for the sake of while we're while, while we're here. So you can change, you can uh, affect the feathering and the size, and you know play with it that way. So again, I recommend uh, anytime you've got a new tool that you're messing with, um, that you would try the different options. You can uh, obviously deselect and uh, say, you know, I want to see it before and after, more or less, right? Good way to go. So that's the uh, clone tool. Again, you're working right in in with your raw file while you're um, messing with the uh, the image. And again, I mentioned this in a previous video. It's real common for me that I will have done some cloning to then want to get back to editing. Right? I want to change contrast. I want to you know saturation, whatever. And so I'll start to monkey with uh, the the settings, and then I'll get like an effect like this. See that? So essentially, everything I'm doing here is affecting the layer that I have active. 
So because I've got the clone layer active, even adjustments get affected to those clone areas. So keep that in mind. I can, uh, you have to, if you want to get back to editing your image, you have to switch back to your main layer and then you'll see everything changes back to how it was before. And uh, you can then, you know, play with, play with what you want to play with. Make sense? Thanks for watching this video. I also have a video out on um, dodging and burning, which is a, a real common uh, thing for photographers. So check that video out. And again, I also have the introduction to layers, which uh, covers a little bit more in detail about using layers, activating them, deactivating them, deleting them, you know, the different options there. So, uh, you know, if you've got any comments, obviously leave those below. Uh, play nice with others. And uh, if you have any other Corel aftershot questions or, or functions, features that you're looking to have a little more information on or maybe how do you do this or what's the best way to do that, feel free to leave them in the comments. The uh, community can jump in, but uh, I'm happy to uh, create videos if it's a, a feature that either A, does it in fact exist or it's a technique that uh, I can uh, demonstrate for you in a way that would be helpful, uh, please leave me a comment for that below. And don't forget to subscribe. My channel, you'll notice, is a bit of a mix of some Corel Draw stuff, some photo paint stuff, and uh, also some techniques on just designing business cards, which was more of the early days kinds of stuff all, uh, all there. So anyway, you guys have a good day. Talk to you later.